Mark 3, chapter, uh, verses 20 through 35. Listen for the word of God. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. This is talking about Jesus and his disciples. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul. And by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an internal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I know some of you are thinking right now, where is the good news in this text? And I will admit to you on my initial reading of the text, I too thought the same thing. But friends, I promise you that in this text is embedded some good news, but it will require us to excavate the text and discover it together. Our pericope begins mid-sentence. Jesus is trying to eat after a long day. Then we have this crazed crowd of Jews and Gentiles who were desperate to get close to the man who said he had all power to heal sickness and demons. And we have Jesus' family en route because they are thinking that he has lost his mind. And then we have the scribes in Jerusalem who are after him because they see him as evil. And we have Jesus in the middle of all of this, not only speaking parables, but apparently also rejecting his family. This is a great plot for a great drama, right? But friends, for a moment, I need us to moonwalk back to the beginning of this chapter to understand the frenzy of the crowd. Jesus is, has healed a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath. Crowds from Judea and Jerusalem and beyond are coming for healing. And so the more that uh, Jesus continues to heal people, the more the religious groups were upset with him. And so, friends, my hermeneutical suspicion is that by the time we arrive at this text, Jesus is hangry and a little irritated. As we peel back the layers of this text, I want us to consider how the, this gospel writer frames the text. And friends, always keep in mind that these stories are told from, or they are redacted stories that were written from an oral tradition that they are about Jesus. But in this particular pericope, Mark takes what we call a chiastic style of writing. And what that means is he starts to organize the events in an ABC order and then reverses the pattern and to continue with a B. A order so that C gets the highlight. 
Uh, let me explain it uh, this way. So A, uh, and Walter, if you can keep the scripture projected so they can follow me as um, I'm talking about this. So the A would be, Mark begins to talk about Jesus' family. We see that in verse 21. Then B, we have Jesus being accused of being Beelzebub. We see that in verse 22. The C, the heart of the story, is Jesus speaking in this parable about a divided house and a strong man. And then Mark goes backwards and gives us B again, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. We see that in verses 28 through 30. And then uh, Mark concludes with an A, Jesus' family uh, is at the scene again in verses 31 through 35. So although the language may be nuanced, we have AA that's relatable and BB that's relatable. I like to think of this style of writing as like a sandwich. So on the top and the bottom layers, you have all of your favorite toppings and condiments layered on the top and the bottom. And this heightens or heightens the taste of what is in the middle, maybe as roast beef. Mark gives us a clue at the very beginning of this text, what this section will focus on, which is a house. And customarily, a house functions as the symbol for the church. And friends, what I always find interesting about the super religious in this text and the super religious everywhere is that we often name that which we cannot understand or relate to as abnormal or weird or evil. And so at the onset of this text, Jesus is defined as one who is outside of his mind. And so the literal translation here is, he has stood outside. Stood outside of what, Latrell? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> he stood outside of tradition. He stood outside of the status quo. He stood outside of the religious idioms and static rituals. And wonderful people of God, I submit that Jesus was not outside of himself or outside of his mind. I submit to you that Jesus was being radically authentic. And so friends, as we move into further into this Pentecost season, I believe that this text and the Holy Spirit is inviting us to become radically authentic. What do you mean, Latrell? You ask great questions. <laughs> to be radically authentic is to listen to that which you feel in your bones. It is that which vibrates from your soul or what I often refer to, what makes your soul come alive. And to make it more plain for us, I have brought in an animation witness to help us draw further clarity on this. How many of you have seen Happy Feet? The first one. All right, remember Mumble. Mumble went to music class and the expectation of the teacher was that Mumble would sing from his voice, from his diaphragm, Troy, because that's where melodious sounds come from and penguins were accustomed to hearing sounds from voices because the culture says that all penguins can sing. Brother Mumble tried it, but it did not work for him because the music did not come from his voice, but the music came from his feet. His community had not yet understood how the same spirit that gifted them to sing from their voices could also use a different key, a different platform, a different style of music. And friends, this is an aside, but Bishop Yvette Flunder always um, makes the statement that I think that is apropos to this sermon today, that the only difference between a heretic and a prophet is timing. The only difference between a heretic and a prophet is timing. So Jesus then gets this label as Beelzebub, this demon, this heretic, had the unmitigated gall to go around healing people. But what I like to say about this, my friends, is that 
A part of being radically authentic is being fully present. Wherever he was and whoever was in his presence, Jesus was attuned to the needs around him. He did not turn a blind eye to what made him uncomfortable. If people came to him, he responded to their needs. And I assert that these super religious folks in the text were futurist. They were so busy waiting for the one to come that they missed present opportunities to be here and to do now. Jesus is radically authentic by speaking truth. Jesus does not flee the negativity of the crowd. He stands and he faces them head on. Now, this is how my mind works sometimes. As I was reading verses 23 through 27, um, my science and math friends will appreciate this. Math equations started to run through my head. And friends, I was never a good math student. And so that's why I became an English major because I thought it was safe. As long as I stick with words, I wouldn't have much use for math. But here I am just a few short years from college and I am referring to math to help me make a sermon plain. Who would have imagined that? But Jesus sets up a word problem for us. How can Satan cast out Satan? A kingdom divided cannot stand. A house divided cannot stand. Satan divided cannot stand. Jesus says, therefore, if this charge is true, that by demons I cast out demons, then Satan is done. It's over because nothing can stand outside and against itself. It cancels it out. And so therefore, super religious friends in the text, your argument is weak. Jesus leaned into the moment to teach. He didn't shy away from it. He didn't hide from it. He went with the flow of the spirit to bring clarity to the inner workings of the Spirit of God that was present on earth now. What I like about Mark Gospels, and it's true in some of the other Gospels, is that if they mention it one place, it shows up in another place. In Mark chapter 1, verse 7, John the Baptist refers to Jesus as the stronger one. So in this chapter, chapter 3, Jesus is bringing to light that characteristic of the stronger one, the one who has the power to tie up and to plunder. And here's the application for us on today, my friends, is this. Jesus has come with the wind of the spirit to take apart, to tear down, to dismiss, to remove, to tie up all of those things that hold us captive those things that would continue to keep us from being radically authentic. Jesus says, I have come to remove all of these religious trappings and exclusions and isms and the self-loathing so that what you thought was unforgivable, you can now see a little bit clearer. Mark ends the text with what seems as a diss to his family. Jesus was like, yeah, I know that they're out there and I know why they're here, but what I am doing in here is expanding the kingdom of God. And those who were once on the outside, those that the religious leaders did not want to touch, they were now included in the family of God. These were the people who were sitting at the feet of Jesus. And so for Mark, the blasphemers are not those who are outcasts, but those who call the work of the Spirit evil. The Holy Spirit filled Jesus was attending to the present needs by revealing that God is with us and is indeed among us doing a new thing, moving in a new way. And as I take my seat, I want to return to our animated witness, Brother Mumble. Mumble was forced to leave his home because his community blamed his unique ways for the famine that was brought upon their land. 
Mumble was able to find community outside of his community. But Mumble was also able to find out what was causing the disruption in his homeland. There were aliens. Long story short, he gets captured by the aliens. The aliens put a tracker on him. But what attracted the aliens to Mumble was his peculiar song, the music that was in his feet. And so they follow Mumble back to his homeland and the aliens or humans began to see that there were other penguins in this community. And so they released the fish as Mumble begins to teach his community how to dance. And so friends, what I am reminding us today to do is to listen to the sound of the genuine within ourselves. Because if we remain true to it, we can influence a culture. Thus ends the lesson. I want to invite you all to pray with me by closing your eyes.